Well, NATO has agreed to strengthen Ukraine's air defenses, including sending more Patriot missile systems. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has repeatedly appealed to Western allies for more help, more weapons, and he's been meeting NATO ministers this week in Brussels. Now, separately, Ukraine says that it has shot down a long-range Russian bomber for the first time in this war. But officials in Moscow say the aircraft crashed in a sparsely populated area because of a malfunction during the combat mission. Meanwhile, Russian forces have been inflicting steady losses on Ukraine, allowing them to seize or regain positions in the east. After major setbacks in the first year of the war, Russia now seems to have the advantage. President Vladimir Putin believes his forces have turned the tide in his favor. They're slowly seizing more Ukrainian territory and damaging its economy with long-range strikes. The strategy is always the same. You need to show better results than the commanders in the neighboring sectors of the front, better than other generals. You need to show that somehow your troops are moving forward. If you don't show these kind of results, or just say that you are holding your positions, repelling all Ukrainian attacks, and not losing any territory, then that is a bad result, and you are likely to be replaced. For more than a year, the front line in eastern Ukraine has barely moved. The fiercest fighting is now taking place near the city of Avdiivka. Russian forces are also trying to take Chasiv Yar, that's near Bakhmut, which was captured a year ago. To do so, they are using a simple tactic. It's absolutely inhumane, brutal and so on. But this tactic works. It involves pushing through Ukrainian defenses despite heavy casualties. It means relentless attacks by small and medium-sized groups, without any serious maneuvers and without the support of tank units. I think they'll continue these attacks because no one sees any other more effective way. The Russian army is facing equipment and weapons shortages, although the problem is not as serious as on the Ukrainian side. Many armament factories in Russia have stepped up production and new ones are being built. A good example is the factory in Tatarstan, which produces drones. There was absolutely nothing there before the war, even during the first year of the war. But since then, they've built this plant that produces huge amounts of Shahed drones, which attack Ukrainian cities almost every day. But despite an advantage in resources, the Russian war machine is said to be struggling to replace its losses. Analysts believe that big changes in the conflict are unlikely in the coming months. Generally speaking, the Russian strategy at the moment is to drag out the fighting until November with slow advances, to show the West that Russia will not pause its offensive, that it will advance further. In November, Russia will see who becomes the next US president and will then begin to plan what it does next. Until then, Russia is expected to continue its long-range strikes and frontal assaults, with further casualties in Ukrainian cities and among its own soldiers. Well, I'm joined now by Katarzyna Zisk. She's with the Norwegian Institute for Defense Studies. It's good to have you with us this evening. How sustainable is Russia's meat grinder strategy? Well, Russia faces a number of challenges and weaknesses um, in, in uh, its armed forces. And I think long term, uh, this will be very difficult, including also the economic foundation for the Russian uh, for the Russian war effort looks quite bleak with 11 percent uh, decline in GDP expected by IMF in the next five years. But in the short term, this strategy actually um, is on Russia's side. It helps Russia to uh, to uh, regenerate the force relatively quickly, saturate the Russian, the Ukrainian air defenses, 
exhaust ammunition. Um, Russia has an advantage in, in uh, personnel as well, in manpower. Russia is right now conducting a large-scale military modernization program, which includes a huge increase also in, in the number of personnel. The objective is 1.5 million. We do not know if they will be able mm -hmm. to, to, to get that. But we see that they still um, manage to mobilize a uh, large uh, quantities uh, of, of personnel, which, as we see, help uh, Russia to push through, even if the offensive is still limited. And, and considering all of this, I mean, even if Ukraine gets more help from NATO, from the United States, is the pace of support simply too slow to give Kyiv an advantage? Obviously, and I think that's what would we see at the front and the Russian um, advances, the struggles on the Ukrainian side, um, uh, given the, the problems in the personnel, the, the uh, disproportional um, uh, disproportions in ammunition, in air defenses. We see that, unfortunately, uh, the aid is uh, way too slow, and it is, of course, uh, a large Part of the problem is, is that the U.S. aid has been blocked for such a long time, for months now, in the U.S. Congress. So, so Russia, and this has allowed Russia to, to continue pushing along the front, but also to, to uh, undermine the critical infrastructure, uh, undermine the functions of the state, try to undermine the functions of the state, uh, exhaust uh, the, the, the civilian population, and also attack the Ukrainian industrial uh, capacity. So Ukraine also uh, has problems to to defend itself. Ms. Issa, I've got about a minute left. I want to ask you, Ukraine says that it shot down one of Russia's strategic bombers. What does that tell you? Well, I think, for, first of all, that, that Ukraine, if they have air defenses, they are, they are using it very well because the type of the strategic bomber we saw shut down is actually used, has been frequently used by Russia to attack Ukraine, including uh, Ukrainian uh, civilian uh, population. Uh, this kind of strategic bombers, they, they carry cruise missiles. Uh, and so again, this, this shows that, that uh, the critical importance of, of strengthening uh, the Ukrainian air defenses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Katarzyna Zisk with the Norwegian Institute for Defense Studies. We appreciate your time and your analysis tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Alessia Vinyas de Sousa is a researcher at the NATO Defense College in Brussels. Her expertise includes Russia and cybersecurity. Dr. de Sousa, do you agree with this assessment that Moscow is waiting for the result of uh, the U.S. election before it considers any longer-term plans? Well, thank you so much for having me. And um, I think um, I would disagree with this assessment because based on the open source evidence that we see, uh, Putin is uh, planning major counteroffensive in probably early June. Um, we see mobilization of the um, uh, troops. Uh, we see repositioning of the troops. Um, so I, for the time being, I find it very hard to believe that he would feel constrained and he would want to wait till November, uh, till the U.S. elections. Um, they're using this window of opportunity to increase and expand their control of the Ukrainian territory. Now, just this morning, deaths were reported as a result of Russian strikes on Ukrainian targets. But recently, Moscow's focus seems to have shifted to targeting Ukrainian energy infrastructure. How damaging is this for Ukraine? Well, since the beginning of the war, there have been about 160 attacks against the Ukrainian critical infrastructure, particularly energy sector. Uh, but Ukrainians have been successful at... Um, uh, defending themselves against these attacks. Uh, now they're experiencing shortages of missiles and the air defenses, and they're making hard choices between whether they will be defending critical infrastructure. Uh, for example, the recent attack uh, out of 11 uh, missiles launched by the Russians, uh, seven were um, um, like de defeated, but uh, four managed to penetrate the um, defense, um, Ukrainian air defenses, and this caused uh, large damage. Um, so uh, this is what we're seeing. Large destruction is due to the shortage uh, of the ammunition that Ukrainians need to defend uh, their critical infrastructure. Um, uh, so that's, and they will be making hard choices, will be forced to make hard choices if the aid does not arrive um, as soon as possible. Now, in our report, we also heard about new factories that produce large quantities of these uh, Shahed drones. Is this an attempt by uh, Moscow to overwhelm Ukraine's air defences so they 
have to make decisions on what to defend? Actually, yes, uh, we saw that unfortunately the Russians managed to scale up their um, drone productions faster uh, than anticipated. And uh, what the drones do, first of all, they reduce the costs, uh, they cost a fraction um, or compared to like, uh, missiles. Um, uh, and then also they can engage the civilians in producing those bombs. So for example, recently Tatarstan um, is about to enact or considering uh, enacting the law that would allow minors, uh, 14 year old and uh, uh, older to be deployed, be employed uh, in the production of the drones and other um, like in the military defense complex. Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, what the Russians are trying to do, they're trying to reduce the costs um, of um, like uh, carrying on airstrikes on the Ukrainian infrastructure and the civilian infrastructure in Ukraine. And um, yes, they are scaling up the production of those drones. This is very unfortunate. Now, what weapons or which strategy would you say is most likely to ultimately decide this war? Well, I don't have a crystal ball, but uh, based on what's been working so far and uh, the reasons why we see this uh, uh, situation in the theater now. Uh, so first of all, uh, we should uh, enhance, um, we must enhance uh, Ukraine's air defenses. Uh, the allies have been united, we must stay united, but at the same time, the allies should deliver on the um, uh, packages that they pledge to deliver. Um, and then uh, in addition to that, uh, we should continue uh, building Ukraine's resilience uh, to this type of attacks that unfortunately we will be seeing more. Um, and um, more, more than, uh, more importantly, is um, to stay united and continue mm. signaling strong support uh, to Ukraine. Dr. Alessia Vinas de Souza, researcher at the NATO Defense College in Brussels. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having me.